Before we begin, thank you very much to Scrapnel for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. I'm so sorry that your, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry that uh, copyright issues forced you to change your name, but hey, we know you for the Insecticon you are. Thank you very much to all my patrons for the support. You are genuinely what keeps the channel alive. Now, the big news of the day. Oh, thank God for big news days and I don't have to worry about content. This is gigantic for many reasons. Uh, G.I. Joe just did a fan first style thing for a Thursday, uh, whatever, but they did a presentation, lots of new classified series figures coming out, a few things for the anniversary. But hey, the big thing, the big takeaway from this was we are getting a we are getting a full sized three and three quarter inch compatible his tank that does transform into G1 Megatron. This is, I think, way overdue, way overdue. Hasbro has said in the past that the reason they never did Transformer G.I. Joe crossover toys was because there was never a point where both series were popular enough. You either had you either had Transformers was riding a high or G.I. Joe was one or the other. And when one was down, the other was up. Now, for a toy maker, that's good. It means one of your big franchises was always uh, keeping you afloat. When uh, when you are a fan and you are wondering why don't the two biggest names in the Hasbro umbrella actually collaborate, you kind of wonder why, especially when the collaborations over the years included Star Wars and Marvel, and now we have this litany of crossover characters thanks to the collaborative series. And now here we have, finally, a collaborative series, G.I. Joe Transformer. Now, one toy does not a video make. So we're going to go down and take a little bit of history lesson of the G.I. Joe Transformer crossovers we've had in the past, toy line wise. We have had crossovers in, uh, in the in the comic, the comic books, of course, is the most common. We had one in the cartoon that we're not supposed to really talk about, but hey, we know it's there. So we mostly, admittedly, have Fun Pub to thank for a lot of the G.I. Joe Transformer crossovers, specifically uh, the G.I. Joe Collector Club. Uh, got a lot of these. Uh, I, I can't remember which ones came first, so we're just kind of going in order of, wow, that's cool. Uh, so... It starts with Marissa Fairborn and After Breaker. A, uh, I, I don't know GI Joe vehicles, so forgive me. Uh, but it is a is a Joe motorcycle repainted into G1 Afterburner, which I love. I love that a Technobot came out, and Marissa Fairborn as a GI Joe. And this was the first time we got a Marissa Fairborn action figure or figure of any kind that wasn't super creepy. Thank you, Kiss players. This was this was early on. I don't know if this is the start, but this was one of the early ones. This is the one I really wanted. I still hate that I didn't pick this one up because I wasn't in the Joe Collector Club to make an order. Uh, this is awesome. So it's Old Snake. Who that, That's the one we're not supposed to talk about. There's an episode of Season 3 called Only Human where uh, the, the plot does revolve around an old terrorist with a silver face mask who is conveniently voiced by Chris Lada. They don't mention the name, but uh, at the very end it does indicate when he tries to go for the Cobra and chokes halfway through. Yes, this is a very aged Cobra commander still at it. And repainting, repainting Prime Soundwave as the Cobra Bat, I think is genius because it's a brilliant idea for a repaint. It looks really good. I love the Bat. This is one of the few G.I. Joe designs I really like. It's the only classified Joe toy I've got. This was a lovely two-pack. Three-pack, sorry. We move on to larger vehicle sets. Here is the Chris Lotta special, and probably the most obvious pairing in G.I. Joe and Transformers. It is a Cobra Commander figure paired with a Sky Striker jet that has been redone into G1 Starscream, right down to the Tampa... Right down to the uh, the heat rub on the on on the top. This is this was so cool when they started doing these these GI Joe vehicles with G with Transformer Deco. This was so cool. 
I guess it's it's Joe centric because of course it doesn't transform, but just the idea that it came this close was just like super exciting back in the day when we first got it. And this this was just the beginning. As far as I remember, this was the beginning. Like I said, it's hard for me to keep track of all of these. But this wasn't enough. They said, let's do more. Let's go bigger. So bigger they went. Hoo boy. <laughs> two vehicles, two Joes, a plethora of accessories. So we have uh, God, we have a Hiss tank done up as Soundwave. And then we have, I believe this is a Rattler, which is normally a Cobra vehicle, but done up as Power Glide because that does match Power Glide pretty well. Again, super cool crossover ideas. Super cool figures in general. Really, really dug this. Yeah, uh, this was, again, a lot of fun to watch these come out. Uh, let's see. It's, it's also, like, weird to me. Like, a Power Glide of all characters getting me a big exclusive, mostly just because the vehicle mode matched, but that's kind of how that goes. I guess that's uh, Afterburner as well, now that I think of it. But still, super cool to see what, what would have been, but this is all still just hypothetical. Nothing transforming. And that would also include this, a jet fire done up with a Sky Striker, a Hound done up with a co with a uh, G.I. Joe Jeep. And this set went a little bit farther. The Baroness here came with a brand new sculpted Ravage with a leash to recreate the comic book cover that's real famous. It came with a G.I. Joe styled bludgeon, which is a hilarious throw in. They threw in a uh, blaster as a boombox scaled for three and three quarter inch figures too. Uh, I don't think anything like that. See, like this would have been the time to do a sound wave that way, but I don't see one here. Still, like the sets, you can see they went all out to for this because it went over well a couple once or twice. So then they just went screw it. The biggest sets we can possibly come up with, and yeah, that was what we had for Transformer GI Joe crossovers for a long time. The only the only things that were packaged that had you know both logos on it now this is all the gi joe side of things on the transformer side of things we had to go with homages and uh just uh mostly like tongue-in-cheek things you know in energon we got snowcat which shares the name and design of a of a vehicle from gi joe though not the color scheme and it never got repainted into the proper color scheme to recognize it as any particular snowcat still looks really cool and it was it was the first like it was the first time we really got a nod to the franchise's crossing over in the toy universe. So this was the beginning. Here's Viper from Combiner Wars. Now again, Power Glide just fits the Cobra Rattler, so they just keep using him one way or another. This is uh, a Viper is designed. I can't remember the name of the GI Joe character, Cobra character. Let's be specific that it's modeled after, but you can actually see the modified Cobra emblem underneath the Decepticon symbol. This was, again, a super cool thing to get and one of the very rare times that we got a proper crossover, right? even being named a Viper. And then there's one of my favorites, Serpent OR. Brilliant use of the Rat Bat head. Brilliant use of that. I thought that was a really smart choice. Uh, again, there's a crossover comic that does connect these two, so there, you know, there is a canonical Serpent OR, and and again, this this is close. This is close. It's still not quite what we were asking for, but it is a transforming GI Joe character of sorts. This has all led us up to today, where we can actually enjoy the fact that Megatron is now going to be a hiss tank, and looking at the robot mode. It's not the best. Um, it's not the best thing I imagined it could possibly be. Okay, so I'm going to get this right out of the way. Um, let's see. Can we see the vehicle mode? The vehicle mode looks spectacular. I mean, that's just a hiss tank straight up. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Looks great. All right. It's obvious that the hiss tank took priority in this design process. It has to look like an accurate hiss tank. You can barely see any of Megatron left over. A little bit of the gray in the midsection. His torso makes up like a rear bumper section, but that's literally it. Everything else, straight up his tank. He comes off really, really kibble ridden 
as a result. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of that. So uh, where's the other shot? Do I have the other shot queued up? Yeah. So you can see how much stuff just like hangs off of the back. Aside from the entire cockpit section being a backpack, most of the vehicle shell is on his shoulders and points backwards. He, so he's already super back heavy. We, he fell over during the presentation. So that I'm not a fan of. He uses a chunk of his vehicle mode as a shield. I always hate that. That always feels like such a cop-out design choice. And, and shields do not suit Megatron. Let's point that out right away. Megatron is not a shield guy. Mega, Megatron is a warrior that literally strapped the biggest gun he could find to his forearm to go into battle with. He's not a shield guy. So th this is already a little bit, a uh, little bit weird. I feel like, I feel like they were, the, I feel like the design suffers a lot because they were trying to get as much of the classic G1 Megatron robot mode into it as possible without sacrificing anything from the vehicle. They, that's the idea. Is like the the his tank has to be perfect and the Megatron has to be as close as you can get to perfect, which leads to a lot of shell forming. It leads to a ton of kibble on him. I feel like if it was done more in this style, if it was done more like this in that sound wave where it was a his tank, but it is designed and colored to look like it transforms into Megatron, and not only do you get, I think, a smoother blend between G.I. Joe and Transformer, but you also uh, you also create a much more solid figure that doesn't have to rely so much on all these parts hanging off of him. This, I think, I think this was to the detriment of the figure itself. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Now, it is scaled to three and three quarter inch characters. If you noticed, Baroness is riding up top in the turret. It's the same turret from the top of the Hiss tank. Uh, so there, there is some element in here that is actually pretty clever. That the, there's still function for the Baroness even in robot mode. I don't know why Megatron would let anyone pilot him. I don't know. Like that seems a little bit weird. You, she, she fits in the pot cockpit too. It is an O-ring style figure, which one I already hate because I don't want this. This figure will break on me eventually, and the but the benefit here is that that does it does mean that he's that the toy, the tank will fit any of your classic GI Joe toys. If you were a kid, just hoping you could put a, your Cobra Commander in a G1 Transformer, you can kind of do that now. It will you know that part will actually work, but yeah, it is cool that there's functionality in both modes. In in like. In a weird little happenstance thing, uh, if you this is, it comes across very human alliance, you know, going back to the uh, the old movie line, and, and you know just and, but even bigger than that because it is scaled for three and three quarter inch GI Joe toys, the thing is enormous. It's a ninety dollar piece, and they equated it to a commander class figure, which is uh, yeah, <laughs> about ninety bucks now. So that yeah. That, that 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 works out. People have already pointed out, oh, well, his thighs are really hollow. I'm like, have you seen modern Transformers? That's just a thing now, all right? This is already complicated enough. Let's not, like, bog it down and make it, you know, 50% more expensive by filling up every gap in it. You know, I'm, I'm just amazed that they ma made it happen anyway. I wish they, you know, I, I will have voiced my concerns that it should have been done a different way, but at the very least, it looks like Megatron, it just it looks like Megatron with a bunch of black parts hanging off of him. So, I do wish it was done better. Like it looks really cool. I pre-ordered it. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to I'm not going to be like a hypocrite here and it's like, "Oh, this sucks, this sucks, don't buy it." No, 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 no. This could be done better. I think this went in the wrong direction. Did I still buy it? Yes, cuz this is a dream come true. For an 80s toy fan, this is everything you'd always want. Okay. Voltron as a transformer, like like a combiner transformer. That 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 one I'm still waiting for. Probably never going to happen. But hey, a boy can dream. I like it for what it is. I like it for what it is. I think it can be done better, but it's still going to be super cool to transform a his tank. There is a little bit of teaser here as well. Uh, the box itself does have a message on it, uh, and they hinted about it in the uh, uh, Hasbro people. Don't lampshade things like this. You don't lampshade things like this. Just show it off. So, like, here's this box. It's got the top secret 
file folders on the back just a, as a little Easter egg and then just move on. Don't go wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hey, you might want to read the text. Hey, it might be something there. Wink, 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 read it. No, it's so forced. It's so forced. Let people discover it. Then it's like a cool thing. And then when people discover it after the fact, they go, oh, they'll make another news post about your new toy. And people go back and look at it again. Okay, so the message reads, surveillance has detected spies in uh, scouting Cobra, de Cobra base. Unauthorized vehicle is identified as subject B. Be prepared to intercept. Their sting is sharp, but we are poised to strike. That little bit of flavor text, does that, that, that one sentence at the end that is very unofficial, does, everything sounds very much like a classified document until we get to that last line. Uh, subject B with a sting, that indicates a bumblebee. So it, being the anniversary gift for G.I. Joe, it would not shock me. It would not shock me if there was a bumblebee on the way to go with this. I don't know what... G.I. Joe vehicle he would turn into. I'm trying to think of off, off, off the top of my head. Now, all the ones I could think of, like Jeeps and you know tanks, would like, would be better served as better characters. There's part of me that thinks like there's was it Rolling Thunder? Like there's a, there's a G.I. there's a big G.I. Joe tank vehicle that a third party via you know like like an armored carrier vehicle that uh, some the third party company did as an Optimus Prime toy. I'm like, make that, make that, like make an official one of those. That would be the coolest thing you could do as a crossover for Transformers. Like it does, it's weird. It's weird, right? It's like Bumblebee, of course, Bumblebee. You know, he's the main character of Transformers these days. But why, like if you're going to do a Megatron, why not do an Optimus Prime? Or maybe this is indicating an Optimus Prime because it does just say that it is a spy scouting the base. So maybe perhaps Optimus is coming yet. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, honestly, this is such an idea in the making. This is such an idea that we've been waiting so long for, almost 40 years. I would not be shocked. I would not be shocked at all if we got more than just this. An Optimus Prime on the Joe side? Yes. I wouldn't even be surprised if Megatron got remolded into someone else. As long as you're going to do it once, you might as well just do it more because you know it's going to succeed. You know Transformer collectors and G.I. Joe collectors are going to eat this up. So if Hasbro doesn't do repaints, remolds, extra characters, and actually makes like a whole miniature line out of this, they're missing a huge opportunity. They are, and I don't think they're going to do that. So that is my thoughts. Also, box is super cool. Super cool box. All right, so those are my thoughts on this box set. I feel like they went the wrong direction for Megatron, but hey, Joe collectors, I'm sure, love this. Joe collectors, remember, this is primarily a G.I. Joe vehicle. It is designed for the 40th anniversary. So I fully understand that it is centric toward being a his tank first and megatron second and i'm sure joe collectors are eating that up i am a transformer guy and i do wish it was done a little bit different but hey uh maybe when optimus slash bumblebee slash whoever gets their turn maybe it will be a little bit more toward transformer fan taste we'll have to wait and see Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.